All right, guys, so you asked for it, and I'm gonna deliver the cybersecurity certification tier list, where I'll be ranking the best and the worst cybersecurity certificates and certifications from S tier, which is the best, to F tier, which is the worst. Now, keep in mind, this is just my opinion. Cybersecurity is something that changes all the time, so the information I give you now may be outdated a year from now, but this is based on my best judgment from my own experience, the experiences of my students, and the experiences of other experts that I've reached out to. So, if you appreciate me doing this type of video, let me know by gently tapping that like button, and let's jump into it with number one on the list, which is gonna be the Azure Security Certifications. And this includes AZ500, which is a Azure Security Engineer Associate, and this focuses on implementing, managing, and monitoring security in Azure environments. Now, this one requires hands-on experience with Azure, and exams are updated regularly to reflect current Azure features. Now, a lot of people would probably put this one into A tier, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it into B tier, and here's why. While very valuable, these are vendor-specific and might not be as universally applicable as other A tier certifications. However, this could depend on the specific job market and region that you live in. So yeah, this one goes into B tier, very solid, but not quite A tier material. Next is going to be a certificate, and this one is gonna be especially good if you are a beginner watching this, and that's going to be the Google Cybersecurity Professional Certificate. And I don't think I need to say anything about this one. This one has a ridiculous amount of positive reviews online. It's got a 4.8 star rating on Coursera. This one is unbelievably good if you are a total beginner. If you aren't a beginner, you can probably skip out on this one, but if you are, this one is absolutely S tier. And by the way, if you're a beginner, definitely check it out in the description in the pinned comment below. Next is going to be CCSK, which is the Certification of Cloud Security Knowledge. And this is a vendor neutral cloud security certification. Now, while CCSK is an excellent certification, it's not quite as universally recognized or demanded as CISSP. Now, don't get me wrong, it is highly valuable, but its niche focus on cloud security puts it slightly below S tier, in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one into A tier. Next is going to be the CCSP, which is the Certified Cloud Security Professional Certification. Now, this advanced cloud security certification requires five years of cumulative paid work experience in IT, of which three years must be in information security and one year in cloud security. And this one complements the CISSP for cloud-focused roles. So I really like this one. I'm actually going to go ahead and put it into A tier. And by the way, I'm moving super fast here, guys, but it's because there's like there's a lot of these certifications. If you want me to make more videos on specific ones, just let me know, but this is mostly just for me to give you guys my opinion. Next is going to be the Certified Ethical Hacker Certification, and it's well known, but it's also controversial in the security community. It has a multiple choice exam format, and it's criticized for lack of hands-on testing. But now it does cover a wide range of tools, but there's less focus on underlying principles. So overall, this one definitely has its positives and negatives, but I think I'm going to go ahead and put it into D tier because it still appears in a lot of job listings, and it does have some name recognition. It's not a great certification, but its continued presence in the job market does suggest that it's not entirely without value. And one thing I will say, and I've mentioned this many times on the channel, is the most important thing when it comes to certifications is that hiring managers, business owners, and basically decision makers both recognize and respect the cert. So the cert itself can suck, right? It can be absolute trash, but if business owners and hiring managers recognize and respect it, then you unfortunately have to respect it too. All right, so the CISSP is next, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put this one straight into S tier. It requires five years of experience in two or more security domains. It covers eight domains of information security, and it's recognized globally, and it's often required for senior security positions. And it requires continuous professional education in order to maintain the certification. So this one is highly respected pretty much automatic S tier. Next is the CompTIA A+. Now, this one is an entry-level IT certification. It covers hardware, software, and basic networking, and it's a good starting point for IT careers, but it's too basic for most security roles. So for that reason, I mean, this isn't a bad one to have. Like, a lot of people probably already have this one, but in many cases, this one just isn't going to impress anyone in the cybersecurity world. So for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and put it into D tier. Next is the CompTIA CASP+, and that's the Advanced Security Practitioner Certification. And this is CompTIA CompTIA's highest level security certification, and it requires practical application of skills. And it's also renewable every three years through the continuing education system that they have. So this one is really solid. CompTIA is a really well-recognized company. I'm going to go ahead and put this one into B tier status. Now, I will say that a lot of people hate CompTIA for some reason, and I kind of understand why. Some of their certifications aren't that good, but they really are 
are well recognized. And unfortunately, until that changes, you do have to give them respect when it comes to actually getting hired. Next is going to be the CompTIA Sys A+, and that's the Cybersecurity Analyst Certification. And this one focuses on threat detection and response. Now it requires practical application of skills and it's renewable every three years through continuing education. So this is another one that's relatively good. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into B tier. Next is the CompTIA Network Plus. Now, this one is for networking more than cybersecurity, so it's not super impressive to security professionals, but with that being said, it's often a prerequisite for security certifications. So overall, it's kind of hard to rank this one because it's a prerequisite for some of them, but it's also not that impressive. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into C tier. Next is the CompTIA Pen Test Plus certification. And this one focuses on penetration testing and vulnerability management. Now this one is less hands-on than the OSCP or CPTS. And I guess it's good for understanding the business and legal aspects of penetration testing. But overall, it's really not that good and it's a bit of a disappointment. There's just other certifications that are significantly better. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into D tier. Now next is the CompTIA Security Plus, and this is the entry level security certification. And it covers network security, compliance, operational security, threats, and vulnerabilities. Now this is definitely not a bad one to start with. It is valid for three years and it requires renewal through continuing education or retesting. And it is often required by the US Department of Defense. And while it is a great entry level certification, it's really not as advanced or specialized as the other A tier certifications. So it is an excellent starting point, but it doesn't carry the same weight as the CCSP or the OSCP in most job markets. So it's kind of another one of those where they're gonna sort of expect you to have it, but it also isn't that impressive. So I'm kind of wondering if I should put it in B tier or A tier because you should probably have it, but at the same time, it's not really that impressive. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into B tier. Next is the CPTS, which is the Certified Penetration Testing Specialist Certification. And this one goes straight into S tier because there is a 10 day exam period and it's even even more extensive than the OSCP. Now this one requires completion of the Hack the Box Academy's penetration tester job role path, and it covers a wide range of advanced penetration testing techniques. And this one is highly respected in the technical community. So this one, like I said, straight into S tier, Super impressive if you have this, and I pretty much have nothing else more to say about it. Next is the GAC, which is the Global Information Assurance Certification. And this one is offered in various different specializations, for instance, incident handling and forensics. And it's really known for its rigorous and up-to-date content. And this one is really expensive, but at the same time, it's often employer sponsored. So yeah, this one's really solid. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a B tier ranking. Next is the GXPN, which is the GAC Exploit Researcher and Advanced Penetration Tester Certification. And this one focuses on exploit development. And it covers topics like fuzzing and shellcode development. And it's challenging even for experienced professionals. And this one is definitely expensive, but it's also comprehensive. And given its advanced nature and the depth of knowledge that it covers, and it's especially good for those specializing in exploit research and advanced penetration testing. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in A tier. Next is ISACA, which is the information Information Systems Audit and Control Association. And this one has several different certifications. So CISA or CISA focuses on IT auditing. CISM is geared towards information security management. CRISC specializes in IT risk management. CGEIT covers enterprise IT governance and all require relevant work experience and continuing professional education. So yeah, these ones are super solid, very well respected. I'm gonna go ahead and put them into A tier. Next is going to be OSCP, which is the Offensive Security Certified Professional Certification. Now this one has a 24 hour practical exam simulating a real world penetration testing experience. And it focuses on manual penetration testing techniques. So there's no multiple choice questions like some of the other ones on the list, which are kind of a joke. And it's really just purely hands-on. Now this truly prepares you for real world ethical hacking scenarios. And because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one straight into S tier. Next is OSEP, which is the Offensive Security Experience Penetration Tester Certification. And this one is an advanced penetration testing certification. It focuses on evasion techniques and advanced exploits. And it is a 48 hour practical exam. And it builds upon skills learned in OSCP. So OSEP is increasingly recognized as one of the most challenging and respected advanced penetration testing certifications. And its practical nature and the advanced skills it tests for make it worthy of S tier status. So yeah, this one's going straight into S tier.
Next is the PJPT or the Practical Junior Penetration Tester Certification and the PNPT, which is the Practical Network Penetration Tester Certification. Now this one is offered by TCM Security and it's founded by a popular YouTuber, Heath Adams. Now the thing about the cybersecurity world is it's constantly changing, right? Hackers are doing new things. Cybersecurity professionals are doing new things. And so the usual thing that I do where I balance the respect and recognition from hiring managers and business business owners versus how good it actually is, is one of those things where it can change really quickly. So this one really focuses on practical real world skills. And from what I've heard, it's really good. And the exam includes report writing and simulating real penetration testing work. So everything I've heard about it is really good. I don't think it has the recognition of some of the other ones, but hopefully that'll change soon. I'm going to go ahead and put this one into A tier. Next is Red Team Ops. And this one covers realistic adversary simulation and it focuses on cobalt strike usage. Now this one actually includes offset considerations that are often overlooked in other certifications. And it's a two tiered certification system for progressive learning. So this one, especially for the right type of situation, like protecting someone, this can be excellent. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into A tier. Next is Crest, which is the Council of Registered Ethical Security Testers certification. And this one is well recognized in the UK and some other countries in Europe, and it includes various levels of penetration testing certifications, but it's less well known in North America. And I know that most of the people watching this are probably from North America. So if you're from the UK or some of those countries that it's better known in, this one might be better. But if you're from the US, I'm going to have to go ahead and put this one into D tier. Next is CRTP, which is the Certified Red Team Professional and CRTE, which is the Certified Red Team Expert. This one focuses on active directory attacks and defenses, and it's a practical hands-on exam, and CRTE builds on CRTP, covering more advanced techniques. Now it's less known, but highly regarded in technical communities. So this is one where for the right type of person, if they're looking at your resume, it's gonna look really good, but a lot of the time they're probably not gonna recognize what they're looking at. So for that reason I have to put it into B tier. Next is the EC. C Council C Pent, which is the Certified Penetration Testing Professional Certification. And this one is an advanced penetration testing certification. There's a 24 hour practical exam and it's a newer certification and it's kind of still building industry recognition and it focuses on specialized penetration testing methodologies. So this one, it's really tough to say. Uh, it's so new that it's just tough to say. I'm gonna have to put it into C tier. Next is the EJPT, which is the E-Learning Security Junior Penetration Tester Certification, and also the ECPPTV2, which is the E-Learn Security Certified Professional Penetration Tester V2 Certification. The EJPT is entry level and ECPPTV2 is more advanced. These both have practical hands-on exams, and there's honestly less industry recognition than something like the OSCP. So for that reason, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put these into C tier. Next is the Google Professional Cloud Security Engineer Cert, and it focuses on securing Google Cloud Platform environments. So this one is gonna be really good if you're working specifically with the Google Cloud Platform, but the truth is it's less widely used than Azure or AWS certifications. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into B tier. And next is the GPEN, which is the GAC Penetration Tester Certification. And this one covers both manual and automated penetration testing techniques. And it's less hands-on than the OSCP, but it's more comprehensive in theoretical knowledge. So it's really expensive, but it's also thorough. But the truth is the OSCP is probably a better choice. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into C tier. Next is the GSEC, which is the GAC Security Essentials Certification. And this one covers a broad range of security topics and it's a good foundation, but it's less specialized than other GAC certifications. So I'm also gonna have to put this one into C tier. Next is the ISC2CC, which is the Certified in Cybersecurity Certification. And this is an entry-level cybersecurity certification with no experience required. And the truth is other entry-level cybersecurity certifications are just gonna be significantly better. So I have to put this one into F tier. Next is the ISC2SSCP, which is the Systems Security Certified Practitioner Certification. And this is an entry-level certification from ISC2. It requires one year of experience in one or more of seven domains. And it's a good alternative to security plus, but it's honestly just way less widely recognized. So it's probably a better idea to just get the security plus certification. So this one's going to go into D tier. Next is the ITIL, which is the Information Technology Infrastructure Library Certification. And this one is more focused on IT service management. And it's really useful for an understanding of IT operations, but it's not really security specific. So it's not something that's gonna really impress anybody, although many people probably already have this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into F tier. Then you've got the Cisco CCNA, which is the Cisco Certified Network Associate Certification. And this provides essential networking knowledge for security professionals. And it does include hands-on simulator extra 
exercises. So this one is really useful to have, but again, it's probably not all that impressive, but overall, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into C tier. Now, by the way, guys, especially if you're a beginner, I highly recommend you check out my Google certification tier list where I'm gonna go over all of the Google professional certifications from S tier, which is the best, to F tier, which is the worst. And you can check that out by clicking right here.